Hello guys, it's Danny here from Dance Tech, and in today's video guys, I'm going to be bringing you Q&A number 18. As always, this is answering the questions that you guys leave in the comments section for the previous Q&A, and also, in general, just around YouTube. Now, um, today, um, I've, I've got seven questions, uh, so, you know, without further ado, let's kind of jump into it. So, first question is from Deformed Pi. I have a question. Do the SATA cables usually come in the motherboard box? Yes, I do. Um, if you spend uh, around 30 to around £60 on a motherboard, you'll typically get two... Typically get two and um, blue SATA cables. If you do spend a little bit more, you probably might get two to four black ones. And if you spend quite a lot of money on a motherboard, we're talking 200 to 300 pounds a year, you should kind of expect two um, to around eight black SATA cables. The more money you spend on a motherboard, typically you do get more cables and kind of accessories in general. There we are. Next question is from Ken. What if you combined 13, 33, um, 4 gig and 1866, 80 gram? Will it work normally? Yes, you can feel free to combine many, many uh, you know, capacities and frequency of RAM. However, the RAM will only run at um, the speed of the slowest uh, module installed. So if you install an 1866 megahertz module and a 1333 megahertz module, your system will post and the RAM will run at 1333. Um, megahertz, and that will be in your case the full 12 gigs. I do recommend getting um, RAM that comes in kind of a pack together, and that'll be kind of sold as dual channel RAM. And typically, I would recommend also grabbing the same brand um, and the same speed and the same capacity, but generally, you should be okay. Uh, but yeah, it will just run at 1333 megahertz. Next question is from Elliot. I really love your channel, mate. I'm just wondering, how do you get all the cash for all these cool parts and equipment I see behind you? And obviously that you have tested and reviewed. Peace. Many, many companies do send me stuff to review. That's kind of how it works here. Um, yeah, companies send me products to review um, in exchange for, you know, we... You know, there's so many products in exchange. I do review the product, and me making a review, if anything, is kind of like free advertising to them. And also, it does um, kind of, you know, inform you guys of what products are on the market. And to a company, if I do really slit a product, they can really look at it, kind of analyze the video, and kind of improve the product based on what I've said. And if anything, that is that is brilliant. Um, you know, my kind of voice improves a product. And if anything, improving products is, is brilliant because you guys, at the end of the day, are going to get better of products um so that's uh, that's kind of how it works i don't buy many of the components here i, I have bought a few components and um reviewed them um, but typically many of the parts that i do buy myself i don't review i really don't know why a lot of you guys have asked me to review and um, the hyper 212 evo and also the audio technica ath m50 x's i will get around to doing that but because i've kind of bought them myself and I've got products from other, other companies that, you know, they've sent free for review. I kind of prioritize them. And because of that, reviewing my own gear, it's kind of bottom of the pile. There we are. Our next question is some C, um, yeah, CGB Gaming. Danny, I have an error on some games. It says display driver has stopped responding and has recovered. If you've got any ideas what it could be. I've updated everything and installed my drivers again, but nothing is working for me. Now, I typically see this error when I'm overclocking. So if I were you, I download MSI Afterburner and see if you have any overclocks on your card. It's quite unusual to get that if you haven't done overclocking, but if I were you, one thing I would recommend is going into some overclocking software like MSI Afterburner or EVGA's Precision X, for example, and just turning down your GPU by about 10 to 20 megahertz. This is the core clock and see if it stops um, spinning out them errors. But yeah, as I said, you do typically get this error from overclocking. If you have no luck, I would contact your manufacturer of your graphic card and uh, you know request an error there. Many, many cards these days come with two, three, and four year warranties, so you should get it replaced if it isn't working properly. Next um, question is from Xbox Gamer. I know Scalic CPUs like the 6700K are more expensive in the UK over the Haswell 4790K without any real performance gains. But what about DDR4? Is it not worth going for Scalic because of that and the M.2 capabilities some Scalic boards offer? Now to me, if you aren't really wanting the M.2 kind of capabilities or any other kind of features that Scalic offers, to me, I would say kind of stay away from it. Now, I know it does offer DDR4, but quite frankly, if we were still on DDR2, we still would be okay. RAM, RAM speed is, isn't really a big factor, and I have done some benchmarks uh, running my DDR3 Corsair Vengeance RAM at 2413.33 MHz, and there's no difference in gaming. Fair enough, you haven't tested video editing, but to me, video editing does require a lot of CPU cores, and if anything, the core count and frequency of your CPU is the thing that really, you know, 
really, really does do the work when he does some video editing. In terms of the Scarlet Chip, if you want a you know a very up, up to date system, and in the future you maybe do want to expand to an M.2 say SSD, then go for it. I am just recommending people based on value for money. The 4790K is just a good chip to go for. It's cheap here in the UK. I know in the states it might not be the same. Um, but you know, if it isn't the same and the 6700K is a bargain there, grab that, that's cool, you can have a more up-to-date system and it is more efficient as well, so you're going to save a little bit on your power bill if you do pay that. So yeah, kind of don't want to get into the debate, Skylake versus Haswell. Skylake is of course newer, here in the UK it is, you know, it does cost more, so yeah, just leave that there. Uh, next question is from Niku. Hi Danny, I have a four gig. Um, let's think I start again. I have four gigs of HyperX Savage memory at sixteen hundred megahertz with a cast latency nine. Is it okay if I add an eight gig stick of Savage memory at the same megahertz and latency and voltage? Is there any chance to damage my motherboard? Um, quite frankly, no. There isn't. No. Feel free to stick it in. As soon as RAM is the same voltage, it will actually post. Just as I've said um, um, earlier on in the video from a question from that from the other guy. It will just run, at, you know, your PC will just post at the frequency of the slower module. So in your case here, if you, yeah, 1600 megahertz, you haven't specified what your new module is going to be, but yeah, it, it will work. It's just like you're going to get 12 gigs and it isn't going to be running in dual channels. So I think to run memory in dual channel, it's got to be the same capacity there. But yeah, it will work, will not damage your motherboard. And finally, last question is from Harry Wynn. Uh, can someone tell me in a nutshell what ITX stands for? ITX doesn't stand for anything, believe it or not. It's just a form factor. Um, I think it. I think it's either 14 by 14 centimeters or 17 by 17 centimeters. I'll put it in the link. Not in the link. I'll put it on the video somewhere. It'll be some text somewhere. But it's just a. It, it's just a size. Just like ATX is. Just like micro ATX and also the extended ATX. So just form factors. And they're just kind of there, so you don't need to go out measuring every motherboard to, to see if it'll fit in the case. If you buy a micro ATX motherboard, it's going to fit in a micro ATX case. If you buy a mini ITX motherboard, it's going to fit in a mini ITX case. There we are. Just makes it nice and simple for buying cases and motherboards. And hey guys, that's kind of been it for all the questions. I didn't get many this week, but regardless, you know, I've heard I answered a few of your questions and hopefully, um, yeah, you know, you've kind of enjoyed that. And if you did post a question that answers it, well, um, yeah, <laughs> thanks for that. And anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you guys do want a question answering in the next Q&A, do feel free to put it in the comments section below. I will screen grab them for next time. And uh, yeah, without further ado, guys, thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.